Hi, it's Matt Gizmo Guy. In a previous episode about solid state drives, I added a new solid state drive to my MacBook laptop. And I took my, the very first solid state drive I got out of there and I talked that I was going to be putting it into an old G5 iMac I have here. And this is one of the um, first generations. This was the very first model of the G5 iMac. You see it's one that doesn't have a built-in EyeSight web camera, had a single G5 processor, and has a three and a half inch size form factor standard hard drive in it. This machine being about four or five years old, five years old now is getting pretty slow and tired. And I did replace the original hard drive in it with a very fast 7200 RPM high-end drive. Um, and yet with today's solid state technology, um, those drives are going to outperform even that drive. So I'm going to show you a little bit about what's involved in upgrading a G5 iMac. The later models of these, which have Intel processors and a built-in EyeSight, are very similar, but uh, the white models anyway, but they added uh, foil shielding at the back of it, uh, which kind of covered this whole thing like a big cookie sheet and taped down. It's a real pain in the butt to try to remove. However, this model is pretty easy. There's three screws on the bottom that you loosen and the back plate comes off. Here in the upper corner of the G5 iMac, we see where the three and a half inch hard drive sits. And in order to access it, you need two types of screwdrivers, a Phillips screwdriver to loosen two screws that this fan and cooling assembly blocks and remove that. And then you also need a set of Torx bits because there's two screws on a little metal bracket, heat sensor bracket here that use Torx heads on the screws. But basically, these two screws here, there's three that hold the hard drive in place and then two on this little sensor bracket. And that's all it takes to pop this out and put a solid state drive in. Well, the reality is, is very few companies, Imation and Mtron, are the only companies who've sold standard form factor three and a half inch um, hard drives because the vast majority of solid state drives are made in SATA format, little laptop sized drives. Well, there's a very affordable solution for that. One of these SATA two and a half to three and a half inch drive adapter cases. And this particular one, which I feature on my website, macssddrives.com, only costs about twenty to forty dollars if you shop it around. And it's just really well designed. When you lift the lid open on that, you'll see there's metal plates and the connector here. And there's absolutely no screws involved. You just drop the drive in. And as you close it, the metal spring latches made up the edge connectors like this and then you just slide the case with the click shut and you've instantly in 10 seconds or less converted it into a standard three and a half inch SATA drive form factor with standard screw hole mounts. So whether you're using this in a G5 or a new aluminum iMac, whether you have a G5 or Intel based Pro Tower, this is all you need to take any number of SATA laptop drives and instantly convert it into a standard interface just like that with both power and data connectors. So I'm going to take this, do a few little bit of screw work, and attach that to the back of the G5 iMac. It's important to note that in order to use this in like a G5 uh, Mac or even a G4 one, you need to format an SSD drive with a standard Apple partition table. This particular solid state drive was my first SSD and I had used it in my MacBook, my Intel MacBook, and I had to format this with a special GUID partition table using disk utility in order to make it bootable under Intel. If I just put this into my G5 iMac, even with OS X already on it, it would not start up the computer. So it's important to know on a G5 system you have to format it with a standard Apple partition map and copy or put OS X on it and then it'll be bootable. If you have an Intel machine, it's critical you must uh, partition it with a GUID partition table and then you should have no problems using it. All right. It should be noted there are a few companies that do make IDE ATA interfaced solid state drives. One of the challenges is, is that SSDs have now outperform and outstrip the capabilities 
of some of these older computers. And it turns out that the AT, while you can get like a laptop size drive and an ATA interface in that, the performance is a lot lower than what um, they'd be under a SATA interface. For some people, I recommend actually just buy the biggest, fastest 7200 RPM or 10,000 RPM drive like a Velociraptor with a huge amount of cash. You may find on something like a G4 iMac or older iMac or a G4 Tower or something like that, you're probably better off spending your money just on the fastest spinning platter drive you can and save your money for an SSD for a much newer <laughs> computer, all right? All right, so in a nutshell, you can convert a standard laptop size drive for use in an iMac, G5, or Intel into a G5 or Pro Tower um, with one of these really great adapter cases um, for a little bit of money and you can breathe life into an older or current machine and not wait around or pay extra for a full-size solid-state drive which they tend to charge a premium for. OCZ will be coming out later this year with what they call their Colossus series and because of the larger amount of real estate they have they're going to be doing those in a RAID configuration which literally will have um, two drives worth of chips inside a case and be able to take people to a terabyte or beyond of storage. Whether you can afford it is another matter. Anyways, thanks for watching and visit my website, macssddrives.com. Bye.